Today I am reviewing the Hero Cut Cut 45X. It is a 45 amp 110 220 volt plasma cutter, rated at half inch clean and 5 8 severance cut. At the time of purchase, this was $270 on Amazon. On the top rear, you can find a pressure regulator that is built into the unit. Lifting up allows you to adjust while pushing down locks it into place. Most cheap plasma cutters have this mounted externally where it runs the risk of being damaged. On the rear we can find the connectors for the arc voltage output, start control signal input, and arc starting signal output. These two connectors are for CNC machine applications only. Here is the main on and off switch and the quarter inch male quick connect airline fitting. Here is the main power cable. It appears to be about a 10 gauge wire. It is very heavy with a standard 15 or 20 amp 110 style plug. Here is the drain line for the water separator that is built into the pressure regulator. On the front we'll find our connector for our torch, our ground connector, along with the analog display for our air pressure, air cut button, 2T, 4T button, our amperage dial, and of course the display for our amp. Let's take a look at the ground and torch leads. The torch lead is 5 meters long and the ground lead is 3 meters long. The torch is an IPT60 style torch. It is a very good quality plastic and very heavy. The trigger guard is spring loaded and the trigger has a very heavy spring on it as well. There is plenty of room to get in there with a glove. Here's the connector that plugs into the machine. It comes with a protective cap that protects the pins when not plugged in. It is important to keep this for storage or transport. The connector has a threaded collar that screws onto the machine as it's being plugged in. The connector has a very good quality strain relief that is molded into the tail section. The IPT60 torch has a ball and socket style strain relief built into the tail of it. It allows for plenty of flex between the lead and the handle. Replacing the consumables such as the tip or electrode is a process as simple as unscrewing the shield cup, sliding the tip off, and unscrewing the electrode. Now let's take a look at the ground lead. The clamp is stamped out of 132nd steel with a galvanized finish. Some of the edges are slightly sharp. The spring pressure is adequate and holds firmly. There is a braided copper strap that connects the jaws on both sides. This relieves the hinge pin from carrying any current. Both jaws are bolted on. The lead itself is bolted directly to the jaws. It is not crimped onto the handle like some older and cheaper units I've seen. The machine side connector is a 3 8 inch dense connector. The housing is an overmold and does not come apart quality is adequate. Unlike scratch start or lift start plasma cutters, this unit features a blowback pilot arc. After you release the trigger, the air will continue to blow for a few seconds. This is to continue to push air over the tip and the electrode. To cool them down. Before we get started we must select the correct safety equipment. You may wear a welding hood or welding gloves while using the plasma cutter but typically that's not necessary. I usually just use dark tinted sunglasses and standard mechanics gloves. I also prefer to wear a respirator while doing any cutting or welding. As far as clothing, I always wear boots and jeans while using the plasma cutter. The plasma cutter produces a lot more sparks than typical welding does, and so boots over tennis shoes is a must.
plasma cutter is running on 110 volts, set to 25 amp and 70 psi of air, cutting eighth inch plate. I am using 150 psi 26 gallon compressor, but I have used this on a 150 psi 6 gallon compressor for short cuts. As you can see, I'm traveling pretty slow, quite a bit slower than what's necessary to cut this metal. The cheap plasma cutters used to not have a low pressure switch and would burn up when too little or no air was present. I don't want to test that out on this one. Just make sure that you always have adequate air hooked up. So far, I've only cut eighth inch, three sixteenths, and quarter inch mild steel. I have cut a small piece of quarter inch aluminum, and that cut pretty good. This unit did come with an adapter to go from 110 to 220 so that you can plug it into a 220 outlet. And I have used this adapter and I've used the unit on 220 and it cut pretty good. No different than how it cut on 110 but again that was only on thinner metal. As you can see the cut is flawless. There is a little bit of slag or dross underneath the cut. That's to be expected. You're going to get that with any plasma cutter or oxyacetylene torch. Uh, there are ways to minimize how much of that you produce, but that's always going to be there. But it knocks right off with a chipping hammer or uh, sander, whatever you want to use. And here's the cut after I knock the dross off of it. As you can see, it's a super clean cut. And even though I was moving slower than what I really should have been, it was still tons faster than using an angle grinder. So what's my thoughts on this unit? Well, so far I love it. The torch seems to be really good quality. The leads are long, which is nice. The ground clamp is pretty decent. The machine itself seems to be pretty decent quality all, all around. Only time will tell on the longevity of it, of course. What's my experience with plasma cutters? Well, one of my prior jobs, I used a hypertherm nearly every day for at least a year. Uh, and if you look up a hypertherm, I can't find a I can't find a new one under a thousand dollars or even in the low thousands. And as far as comparing this unit to the hypertherm, well, these small cuts that I've been making, a little bit of this and that, I can't tell the difference. Cuts perfectly straight, smooth, uh, it's consistent, there's no variation in the, in the cut, so yeah, I think it's a great plasma cutter for, what, under $300, it's great. So do I recommend this unit? Well, absolutely, I love it. If you're a DIYer, working on a car or a truck, working out in the garage or on the farm, on tractors or machinery, and you gotta make repairs, make special cuts, this will definitely do it. Again, only time will tell on the longevity of it, but so far it seems to be pretty good quality. I'll be doing some more videos with it, both showing you really how to use it more in depth on the settings and what some of the different options means like the the cut and the air button and the 2t and the 4t uh, and i'm going to do some videos on cutting some larger steel or different types of materials too aluminum stainless steel stuff like that not just mild steel so look forward to those and if you like this video do me a favor and subscribe. I do have more stuff coming up. I've got several welder reviews that I am currently working on and a bunch of other uh, tool reviews. Uh, a couple compressors, some saws, uh, some grinders, and different things like that. And of course I'll get into some projects before too long, building some stuff. So thank you and see you next time.